Britain has some of the finest restaurants in the world. We were a culinary underdog for years, but now we're at the top of our game. So who's the very best? I asked you where you love to eat out, and you sent me over 12,000 nominations for this competition. But there can only be one winner. How do I find them? By choosing my two favorites every week and testing them to the absolute breaking point. Who will crack under the incredible pressure and who will come shining through? Over the last six months, my team and I have been checking out your best love restaurants from thousands of nominations. Tonight, the competition continues with another of your top culinary favorites, Chinese. Chinese food is one of the great cuisines of the world. Top Chinese chefs use techniques and flavor combinations that you won't find in any other cuisine. There's a Chinese restaurant on nearly every high street, and there's an incredible range, from small family-run outfits to Michelin-style fine dining. Lee, can I have the noodles, please? Thank you, darling. We tend to think of Chinese food as being all about chow mein and special fried rice, but great Chinese restaurants serve food that's as sophisticated and complex as anything you'll find in a posh French restaurant. I've chosen two fantastic restaurants to battle it out for a place in the semi-finals. Tonight, from Mayfair in London, it's the crazy culinary genius of Kai. No, my style of cooking is a new modern Chinese. As a chef, we need to cook from uh, our heart. Versus the best of the Northwest, Blackburn's You and You, a brilliant family-run restaurant. Let the food do the talking. Oh. The earliest memory of food was just cooking with my father. He said, oh, you can't reach the cookers, so stand on these four cases to lift yourself up. I can only choose one Chinese restaurant to go through to the semi-finals, so they must prove to me beyond all doubt that they are the most worthy contender. I'm going to subject both restaurants to three challenging tests, starting with a coach load of 30 guests, all arriving and ordering at the same time. Every restaurant's worst nightmare. First, they'll sashay into Mayfair to sample the avant-garde delight on offer at Michelin star Kai. Where is he? Chef? Hi, good. Nice to meet you. You look like you've just come with a Chinese boy band. Look at that hair. <laughs> huh? Incredible. Superstar. I know. <laughs> you are a superstar. <laughs> Kai's kitchen is led by Alex, the demanding head chef. He's a perfectionist who runs his kitchen with a rod of iron to ensure his sophisticated dishes are spot on every time. How many times I'm, I'm told you? Fuck, man! Alex honed his skills in some of Asia's top five-star hotels before being poached by Kai's ambitious owner, Bernard. The intention was to change people's perceptions about Chinese restaurants. They're trying to reinvent Chinese cuisine, and they put a 21st century twist on it. Amongst Kai's bold and unusual dishes is a unique liquid version of a lamb shank. Now, that does not look like a lamb shank in there. So is it supposed to be like a lamb shank soup, or...? Yes, right. yes. It's, it's one of those dishes which catches people out by surprise. So a lot of people absolutely love it, and some people don't like it. I've just never had a lamb shank like that before. No, no, yeah. absolutely not. Um, if you're going to serve that today, obviously on the menu, make sure the customers understand what it is before. Yes. I don't want them disappointed. It tastes delicious. It's just a really strange way of executing yeah. it. I love these guys. They are very, very creative. And this food is out there. And I just hope that my diners get it and love the experience. Kai will need to be on top of their game to survive my ultimate pressure test. Two hours, two courses. Yeah, I'm going to be over everything. I'll be in the kitchen, I'll be in the dining room, and I'll be watching and listening to everything. So make sure that you give my diners an experience never to forget. Normally, bookings are staggered to take the pressure off the kitchen, but not tonight. My 30 diners will push Kai to the edge and give them a chance to shine. <laughs> On Alex's ultra-modern menu tonight is a choice of three starters. Wasabi prawns with mango and basil seeds, steamed scallops with ginger and spring onions, and Kai's unusual take on a lamb starter. Can you freeze lamb shank? For... Can't give you a whole lamb shank, you'll eat nothing else. With such radical dishes, my guests will need a clear explanation when they order. It's got the flavour of lamb shank, but it actually comes as a soup. Get ready to go. Get ready, your lamb flavour. The first orders hit the kitchen, and it sounds like head chef Alex is launching a full-scale military assault. China, Hong Kong, I you okay, Alex? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what's the table for table five for the starter? Hey, what's up, bro? Go. One. Yeah, go. Yes, table seven. Mm. Yang Jing, okay, Laya. 
。杨金达。Do you have any neurofen? I've got a headache. 需要他一个，我更我大笔的。Why is everyone shouting? 杨金达，杨金达没。Why is everyone shouting? Why is everyone shouting? No, no, because the 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 order I need to coordinate. Just moments into service, and it's clear that Kai's unusual first course isn't going down well with my diners. He no. They don't want the lunch shack. They want to change to scallop. The description of it wasn't quite what I expected. Okay, that should have been explained to me before you arrived. Yeah, apologise for that. So I'd like, if possible, to change this for the scallop dish. Yeah, let me try. The square, the lamb shank was too wet. I didn't explain it was a wet dish, like a thick soup scallop. But I'm the one that changed it for the scallop. So I've ordered on table five. What, Mr. Table? Table five. Right, thank you. Turn side, yeah. You need to take it. One of my diners just complained about the lamb shank. Gloopy, soupy, and not what they expected. Sadly, exactly what I predicted. Liquid lamb shank may be a step too far for my guess. So I hope Alex's amazingly sophisticated main courses are going to impress. He's working his ass off to make soy and honey marinated lamb spiced with chilies, and an extravagant lobster dish scented with crisp curry leaves and cooked with lemon, chili, and shallots. Two of you, Daniel. Oh, there is one. Two, three, four, and a very nice bus. Now, front of house is getting in a muddle. I didn't know when to start because yours hadn't come. <laughs> that is our starter with the main course. Nothing seems to be coming out together. We can't keep a table hanging for seven minutes without anything else arriving on a day like today. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, okay. Well, not it. Thank you. One, take that. One thing, my thing. Let me do the new all every for you, okay? Fuck you, yeah, man. I out. Who called away the main course if they haven't finished the starters? No, no, they finished it, but they wanted another scallop. So no. you can't send a starter and then ten seconds later send the main course. I can you? I get you. So my question originally was, who called away the main courses? I did. Right. Alex, is it always this crazy? Yes, I'm busy. It's a very chaotic service. And uh, yeah, one shouting fine, but 15 of us shout at the same time. Pandemonium. It's such a mess that one diner's dish, the lamb, has been missed altogether. <laughs> I'm hoping it's going to arrive reasonably soon because I'm I'm very very hungry at the moment. Alex, take my lamb. I need one lamb, please. One He's lamb. Coming. He's Thank coming. Right. He's coming. He's coming. Okay. Don't rush the shack. Okay. For a Michelin-star restaurant, this is unforgivable. Even worse, Bernard, the owner, is busy serving up excuses for his staff's cock-ups. Normally, a meal here, everything is in the middle of the table, so everybody's sharing. Uh, it's just unusually today, um, we've had to serve everything individually. Jesus. I don't know why, you, why you're doing that. They share a starter, it's fine, but if they order a main course, I think that customer deserves it. The fact that he took the order down incorrectly, it's not the customer's fault. No, absolutely So we not. shouldn't be telling them that. I'd rather you just sort of hand in the air, Deal with it and move on. Okay. My apologies. Just one table six. Once the food arrives, most of my diners are blown away by Alex's amazing dishes. It is fantastic. The 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 lamb's tender, just wonderful. Okay. I had the lobster and it was absolutely fantastic. Um, I've never had lobster that's been fried before. Um, and it was a really nice contrast as well as having the strawberries and the grapes in there. The lobster was lovely. Very uh, subtle flavours of garlic and chilli, but yeah, amazing. End of service. And time to tell Kai what I thought. The customers that did get the food on time loved the food. It's quirky and it's very striking when it hits all those notes. But we have to remember that when customers are coming in for the first time, you've got to hold their hand every step of the way. That's where we've got to work on. Yeah. You've just got to keep working, keep working, sure. keep working, making it a little bit better every single time. Absolutely. Different. But I know you can go further because you've done it with the food and you can do it with the service as well. Hit all those notes there, put them together, bang. You have an amazing restaurant. Thank you. Next. Come on, Victor. What the fuck are you doing? What is that? Kai's northern competitors, you and you, struggle as the war of the woks heats up. A lot on your shoulders right now, and that standard has to be met by you today. I'm scouring the country in a quest to find my very best restaurant. My coach load of 30 diners is about to hit the second Chinese restaurant, battling for a place in the semi-finals of my nationwide competition. 
It's family run, you and you, in Blackburn. So many of you nominated them, you and you had to go into my top two Chinese. Okay, now. <laughs> it's got that, that energy, that vibe, and it's family run, run with great passion. You can feel that because they care about every little detail. Family is the most important part of this restaurant. I think, personally, it makes this restaurant what it is. You know, it, it, that's the heart and soul of the restaurant. It's not just a livelihood. It's more than that. It's a, it's a definite passion. Dad Charlie started out with a chippy over 30 years ago before opening his first restaurant in 1989. He's 65. There's still flames in him. You know, he's like, he's quicker than me. There's a saying. Um, the older the ginger, the hotter it gets. Now all three of his children work in the business. Good work, good work. <laughs> what makes this restaurant stand out is that Charlie and his head chef, son Victor, source the very best local ingredients. The scallops are massive. Arrived um, this morning. They're beautiful. Thank you. You and you will have just two hours to serve all 30 of my diners a perfect meal. I'm excited. I'm ready. Tonight's dishes include hand-dived salt and pepper scallops, fillet steak with hoisin and chili bean sauce, and a luxurious stir-fried Dover sole. Absolutely delicious. Uh, it's cooked beautifully. Uh, for me, what that dish needs is just a touch more seasoning. Yeah? Thank you. Good. Thank you, boss. Side order with you, main course, sir. My diners look excited by what's on offer but I wish the front of house team would make a point of telling them how fantastic the raw ingredients are. Like salt and pepper scallops with asparagus and mushrooms. For all they know, the scallops could have come from the supermarket. It's Victor and Charlie's chance to show me they can handle this challenge. Let the food do the talking. Once that turbo wok is fired up, dishes start flying out the door. Amazing. Yeah. Wow, that's quick. It's just over two minutes from the first order coming in for food to leave the kitchen. Victor's brother and sister are joined front of house by at least eight other waiting staff who seem to do a lot of waiting. Seems to be a lot of people just milling about and not really paying the attention to the table. Are we having a beauty pageant in here? Look at all these waitresses in here. Blackburn's next top model. She's got the love. She's such a sexy girl. It's complete overkill, and half the time they don't even know where to put themselves. My main concern is the way the kitchen is working. Victor, the head chef, picks the ingredients. Another chef adds the sauce. Then it's Dad Charlie who does all the cooking. He's five years of age, he's there, pounding every dish. Just cooking, 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 and not even coming up for air. The old man's the only one doing all the work. Don't you feel guilty? <laughs> That's the way he wants it to do it. Yeah, that's how he wants to do it. Charlie, huh? you want some help? Would yeah, you some yeah, help? yeah, yeah. In the kitchen, it's a little bit weird for me. The only one doing any work is your dad. He's control, control. Is he a control freak? Oh, uh, yeah. Is he? Yeah. He needs to let go a little bit. Yeah. He still thinks he's going to do one day a week at night. He's seriously. Seriously? Yeah. Orders have already backed up by the time head chef Victor steps in to help with the cooking. There's something quite unique about seeing a father and son on the stove together, you know that? When they're not arguing. They're not arguing. Too busy to argue. Although dishes are now getting out, there's a problem. Right. A bit of soy sauce with this. A bit of soy sauce? Oh, yeah. yeah, I'll sort it for you, no problem. Thank you. No one's tasting anything, which is quite normal for the way they work as a Chinese kitchen, but. The young guy is now starting to cook. And also, Victor's cooking as well now, so you've got the same dish be cooked by three different individuals. So that's how things start to become inconsistent. I can't believe that Charlie and Victor are letting down their delicious and unique ingredients through lack of seasoning. They taste a little bit bland. Yeah, just not as tasty, but I've, I've had them before, and, you know, just, yeah. I would just expect the flavours. Expect the two different tables. And um, one table enjoyed the scallops, the other one felt that they were a little bit bland. So just make sure if somebody's going to cook it, they've got to taste it as well. If it needs a touch more salt. OK, Charlie? Thank you. Thank you. It's not just the scallops. They're also under seasoning their most expensive dish. Three plates of the £30 a head Dover sole have been sent back. Do me a favour, do me another Dover sole. What's wrong? Dover sole is under seasoned. Does it taste it? It definitely needs more salt. 
Ja, ja, ja. Arm dich, arm dich. At the beginning of the service, I mentioned that there was all, yeah, fish tastes delicious, but it's under seasoned. And three times tonight, you know, it's come back bland. You've got to, you've got to do it justice. Charlie's having to redo the sole. It's an expensive dish to get wrong so many times. Charlie, taste? Yeah. yeah. When they hit their stride, you and you's food is extraordinary. What do you have? I had scallops to start with. Scallops, how are they? Really nice, and the main the fillet steak was absolutely delicious. Yeah. Now the you family need to hear what I thought of tonight's service. This is a first for me. I've never come across a Chinese restaurant that has such unique ingredients. And so, if you are going to Helen Back to source those ingredients, shout about it. I could cry on the back of the Dover Sole because I said to you when you cooked it for me earlier, yeah. it needed more seasoning. And it came back three times tonight. Taste it. Do it justice. Yeah, you're the chef. And your father's the sous chef. And tonight it looked like you were the apprentice and your father was the chef. And grab the reins and let him sit behind you. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Slow you. down. Thank you. Now. All right. Slow down, Dad. Slow down. <laughs> if they home in on those small little details with the final seasoning across those dishes, and you've got something pretty phenomenal. Kai and you and you have cooked their hearts out, but both had their failings, and things are about to get a whole lot tougher. The coast trip really showed me what these Chinese competitors are made of, and now I've called both of them to a meeting with me. To find out how their restaurants run when I'm not breathing down their necks, I've been spying on them, and they have no idea. If you want to know how a restaurant treats an ordinary customer on an ordinary day, send in a secret diner. That's exactly what I do. They should get amazing food and excellent service. Nothing less is good enough. Sarah Durden Robertson has worked with me and other top chefs to create and perfect thousands of dishes. Is there any way you can turn the noise down a bit? Food critic Simon Davis is one of the best in the business and has judged food and service at thousands of restaurants. I'm allergic to those. I can't eat sultanas. It's one thing serving easy to please customers, but how will my competitors perform when my undercover diners are deliberately difficult and demanding? First up is Kai in Mayfair. In their first test, my customers didn't get a proper steer on Alex's ambitious menu. Has owner Bernard improved things since my last visit? That was a big test. Unknown to all of you, you've been tested twice. After I left Kai, I sent in my secret diner. And I need you to watch this. Yes, at one o'clock. Yeah. Yes. For starters, I've ordered wasabi prawns and soft shell crab, but I'm going to change my order once I've seen that he's put it through and I'm going to order the lamb shank. Sorry, can I change my order? Yes. Started from, I'd like the um, lamb shank, lamb please. Shank. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Soft shell crab, chili and mango. Okay. Hi, sorry. I asked to swap for the lamb shank. Oh, swap? Oh, yeah. I thought it was the uh, additional order. You no, wanted no, no, to cancel to, this? Okay? Yeah, yeah, OK, that's fine, that's fine. Sorry. Oh, Thank you. So the kitchen's ended up cooking an extra dish because the waiter never said that it was an exchange. That's why he didn't come and ask. It seems to be a bit of a lack of communication between some of the front of house staff in the kitchen. What goes through your mind when you see that there, Bernard? Uh, I think part of the reason why we made a mistake is because it's not unusual for somebody to have three starters between two people. Oh, my goodness, in a martini glass. That's not what I was expecting. Wow. Thank you. Did I read the menu right? That bears no resemblance to the dish that I was reading about. I'm really sorry. I just, I can't believe that that's what I ordered. Is that the last one? It's very weird. 
Could I have the soft shell crab instead? Soft shell crab, yeah. Thank you. It wasn't clear from the menu at all that that's what that dish comes like. Why are we serving lamb shank in a martini glass that's hot? It just seems so strange and such a bizarre thing to do. Uh, it's a fa fancy starter. Fancy starter? Jesus. Thank you. Thanks. I thought that was supposed to be what did it say the mini? Flaming table side. I thought the pork was supposed to arrive flaming at the table. Uh, you don't see it flaming at the table? No. Oh, was it there? Sorry, I missed it. Thank you. Thank you. So there's a great dramatic dish on the menu that has a reason to be great and dramatic. And they do it at the customer's back. I can't see it. My guests can't see it. It's completely pointless. I said, where did that happen? So, oh, sorry, just behind you. What's the point of that? The issue we have with the Chinese rice wine flaming is that very often the flames are quite hard to see. No one can see the fucking flame. Because it doesn't give off a lot of flame. It's a little bit of fun, it's a bit of showmanship. I don't see anything wrong with that. There's a consistent strand through here that you're trying to be clever with the martini glass, the lamb shank, and now you're flambéing something that has got nothing to do with flavour. Don't damage what you've got by trying to be too clever. So is this your first time to try it? It is, yeah. I'm very sorry that that's not <laughs> how things run. So it's, um, you, you, I'll take care of your bills, that's right. Oh, no, really? No, seriously, because that's, that's not um, how we do it. But that's extraordinarily kind. I mean, the dishes have been delicious. That's really kind. Thank right. you. You know, that's somebody who clearly prides himself on the service they feel they ought to offer and on the food they want to hit the table. It has to be perfect or they're not happy, and he's really not happy. OK. Um, brilliantly handled at the end. Offering the whole thing on the house. I think the, the, the emotion I feel right now is more determination than disappointment. You've got to get your head down and make things better. I hope we, we can uh, win it. Next, the team from Blackburn's You and You face the wrath of my secret diner. I really would like to have a drink, actually. I'd get rather annoyed. Can we order some drinks? Tonight, two fantastic restaurants are battling it out to become my best Chinese and win a place in the semi-finals of my nationwide restaurant competition. Oh, Time for you and you to find out how they measured up when I sent in my secret spy. Unknown to all four of you, you've actually been tested twice. I sent in my secret diner, and this is what you saw. So here we are, you and you. I told the Yu family to focus on detail and to properly season the stunning ingredients they source. And I want to see them use the waiting staff wisely so they're not just hanging around. I booked a table. Uh, I've got, I got table name of Duncan for two people at 8 o'clock. Would have hoped to have been offered a drink by now, having been here for five minutes. I know they're busy, but there's <laughs> quite a lot of staff as well. You can't see who's managing the place. It all feels a bit frantic. I really would like to have a drink, actually. I get rather annoyed. Can we order some drinks? I have to call over the waitress to get a drink. Which, given that to my right, there's four waiters and waitresses, and they've all got their backs to us. And I'm sure, sure they're busy. It's a busy night, but we yeah, need to. Ten minutes for a drink. Is that normal? They wait ten, fifteen minutes. No, it's not. But that wasn't a normal Friday night because one of the kitchen hands was off ill. Yeah. So I had to go in and help these guys. That's why yeah, I yeah. disappeared for so long. What you need to do is pay money for better staff and less of them that are more reliable. I brought our staff just really quickly, which was admirable. But the problem is there's now a huge gap between starters and main courses. They should bring the starters out a, bit, a little bit later. And then there wouldn't be such a glaring gap. What they should be doing now is coming up to us and just having a quiet word and you know, saying, I'm very sorry, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? That would completely dilute the situation. Completely ignored. Completely ignored. It becomes an insult where they become offended, like he said. Diffuse it. 
Dave is old, yeah. That's okay. Okay, thank you. This Dover sole with sugar snap peas and carrots looks actually rather rather bland. Um, and the fish itself. It's pretty nondescript. Hi there. I just this Dover sole doesn't really taste of much. It needs some much more seasoning. Yeah. When you've got customers that are sat waiting over half an hour for food, it's got to be perfect. That was dealt with quite well, so I'm going to send this back again and ask to change the dish. <laughs> I still don't like it, I'm afraid. Right, I'll change it to something else for you, Do you mind? Not at all. I'm so sorry, after no. all that effort. I've complained a hell of a lot in restaurants, but that is the best I've almost ever seen it dealt with. Ten out of ten for dealing with a very, very tricky customer. Brilliantly handled. And he's fussy. Beautifully done. Oh, I really, 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 really like that. This strawberry samosa, it's worth the trip alone, seriously. I've never heard such an amazing compliment to Chinese desserts. Fantastic. Really good. As a dining experience, it had a quite, a, quite a sluggish start, but it's just accelerated, and I've now reached a crescendo where I think this is one of the, one of the best Chinese restaurants I've been to in many years. What a strong finish, and he left on a high. We've got this far now. and We just really want to. I'm ready to explore. I'm ready to win this competition. I'm going to take this and hope get to the end of this competition, you know. My two best Chinese restaurants have one final chance to really deliver in my competition. I'm taking them out of their comfort zones and into the kitchen of my own Michelin-starred restaurant. I've asked each chef to create one amazing dish for 20 guests. The test here today is about quality and consistency. Every single plate they produce must be perfect. Their performance will win one of them a place in the semi-finals, the other will be eliminated from the competition. The pressure will either make or break them. I've seen the name on the menu. Frank Gordon's three-star Michelin restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just unbelievable. Just want to win this. We'll cock our heart out. Oh, me and Winkley will definitely try our best to make the, the, the diner happy. Yes. This is an amazing battle about to take place now because we've got two completely contrasting restaurants. I want the quality to stand out, create something magical. The sad news is there's only one of you going through to the semi-final. Make sure it's you. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. They must create their dish using the finest quality beef as their main ingredient, and I'm expecting great things from both teams. It's not just me they have to impress. Some highly distinguished guests will also judge both restaurants' dishes, including Dei Tao Shong, a world authority on Chinese cuisine and respected businesswoman Mei Sim Lai, OBE. I've also invited each restaurant's front of house team. For the chefs, there is nowhere to hide. I'm expecting culinary perfection. OK, on order, four covers, table six. Kai, four beef and ginger. Yes, four. sir. OK. Uh, yes, chef would be great. Yes, chef. Thank you. Is it easy if I share like that? Is that, will that? Will that make it any easier? No, tell me. No, is it? Would you? Is it easy? Fine, yeah, sure. Okay, good. No, just in case. At Kai, Alex is a gifted and passionate mastermind, elevating modern Chinese food to new heights. Alex and Wing, his sous chef, hope to enchant my guests with a creation you'd never find on a high street Chinese menu. They're making beef sirloin with ginger and spring onion pesto, served with broccolini, bamboo stalks, and pumpkin. Is accompanied by spiced rice and a soy reduction. How are you going to cook the beef? I, I, I pan seal. Yep. Then I cut into the rectangular. Yep. Then I finish it in the oven around one and a half minutes. It's so nice to see my kitchen. And how nice is that? You've been here five minutes, you haven't shouted. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Excellent. 
An order. You and you, two covers away, table three, please. Two stunning Wagyu beef. Yes, chef. Yes, sir. Thanks, Charlie. In contrast, you and you is going for a more classic dish. Wok seared Kobe beef with sweet soy sauce, lime, garlic, and ginger. Kobe beef is an amazingly tender cut of meat, but the magic in this dish lies with the flavoring. That's what we've always done, that's um, keeping things simple, using fresh, really good ingredients, you know. I've been waiting to see if Victor, the head chef, can live up to the title and take control from his father. Victor, I want you tasting today. Every fucking thing you put on that plate. I want to see you taste. I yes, need yes. to see you taste. Yeah? Yes, yes. A lot on your shoulders right now, and that standard has to be met by you today. Yes, yeah. Victor has the pressure of the competition and the desire to impress his dad resting on his shoulders. He needs to stay calm and in control. But for my first table of four, Victor dishes up just one plate. That's the first beef, yes? So I'm just missing two more, chef. Sorry. Missing one? Just missing three more on there, chef. So is that three in there? Yeah. How long is that going to take? Three minutes, chef. Just finishing. No, how long is it going to take? Four minutes, chef. Four minutes. Well, that's going to be fucked by four minutes. What do you want me to do? Serve that, or are you going to do four fresh portions again? There you go, Charlie, you know? Serve that, chef. Come on, Victor. I know you can do better than this. I can't just serve one portion. What do you want me to do? Do you want to take it back? I can't just... Serve one. Two yeah. minutes, and I'll have this one up, chef. Service, please. Go with that, please, yeah? Is there any rice? Is that the... No rice is coming. Both say one van birds are well, van. Oh, come on, guys. Listen, just stop. Give me two seconds. What the fuck are you doing? What is that? Yes, I, this is your moment. Do you yes, understand? Sir. This yes, is your Lord. standards. Yes. So get that back in there and split it between four plates. Come on, guys. I know you can do better than this. But if you talk to each other, the rice comes at the same time. Both say one van birds are coming. Fucking hell, guys. Bad start. By you and you. I mean, completely disorientated, no teamwork, and they're father and son, for God's sake. Today, they look like two strangers in the kitchen. Come here two seconds, you. This is not a fucking rehearsal. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I can't just send out one portion. Yes, sir. I've got a dining room full of guests out there. Yes, sir. Listen to me. Yes. And more importantly, slow down. Yes, sir. And come to the hot plate together. Okay. Come on. Yes, sir. On the other side of the kitchen, Alex is also feeling the pressure. Kai, two portions away. Alex, two, please. Stand by the plate. Look at me. Look at me. Yes, chef. Four more beef. That's yes, it. Chef. Thank you. After that, it's two beef. Yes, chef. Thank you. Fucking hell. Two trays of hot plate, please. Alex isn't communicating with me or his sous chef wing. Fucking hell. Come on, guys. And this complex dish needs perfect coordination. Alex, look at me. If we can get a little bit organised, yeah, so the beef doesn't hang around too long on the yes. hot plate, yeah? It's got to go. Yes, OK. It can't sit here too long. Yes, sir. It's got to work together a little bit more. Yeah, chef. Yeah? yeah? So you're putting it on, it's taking about four or five minutes. Yeah. But it's got to go. We can't keep yeah. it back too long, yeah? Otherwise, it's going to be cold. Yes, Ready to go. go. Service, please. Alex's food looks amazing, but he seems to be struggling to cope in my kitchen without his large team. You've got chicken stock boiling over on the hot plate, please. OK, fine. Uh, I'll be with you. Let's go. Let's go take That's the it. fucking pan. I want all that shit off there as well. Stop you. Go, you. Let's go. Go, go, go. You happy with that? Right, I'll be the... Yes. Yep. Go, please. Let's go. Table two. Where's the sauce? Good, thank you. Sauce, pour the left-hand side. Alex, yeah. I want all the pots and pans off the floor. In my kitchen here in 50, I've never had an accident. And today, I'm not going to have one. Yeah. Let's go. Jesus Christ. Very nice. That looks beautiful. Service, please. Go. Table one, please, yeah? Thank you. Done a fantastic job. I'm, I'm still a bit nervous, but you know, with, with seeing this now, I, I feel a lot better. Okay, Victor. Yeah, four wagyu beef away, table one. Yeah, all at the same time. Two rice, two vegetables, and two yes, stunning chef. wagyu beef. Yes. Yes. Thank chef. you. Come on and look at me. I want you to take a grip. Solid. Hold those reins. Yeah, and get this thing back on track. Yes. yes. 
and make sure every plate is absolutely perfect, please. You know your mother sat out there, you know that, don't you? Yes, sir. Yeah. OK. Four beef, please. Stand by. Come on. Nice now. Nice now. Let's go, please. Let's go. Thank Table one. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Gordon just sat on the nerves and then know what I need to do. You and you have come back strong and they've got that focus going on now. Plate after plate of Victor's mouth-watering beef is finally being served. Said it smells amazing. It tastes good. It tastes good. The beef is delicious. <laughs> Very tender. What do you think? The whole thing just completely melts in your mouth, doesn't it? I'm really proud of my dad and my brother for just getting this far and what they've cooked today has been amazing. In a kitchen they're not so used to as well. Our kids have definitely done us proud. That's it, yes? Yes, yeah. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Please. Let's go. Spotless. Thank you. Yes, chef. Thank Very you, chef. Nice. Well done. Thank you, chef. Sit down, yes? Yes. Well done. <laughs> Service is over, and it's time to discover what my distinguished guests think about these two extraordinary dishes, starting with Victor's. Nice to see you. Uh, Ladies, well, welcome. Thank you very much. Oh, this is a real treat. How was the wagyu? Wonderful. Wonderful. It was so tender and mm -hmm. special. It worked very well. The wagyu beef, how was that? Extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Like no beef I've ever tasted before. Really? The uh, UNU one had more authentic flavour to me. The Thai dish, not only the presentation, but the, the flavour is much better as well. I think it was the better dish, mainly because of the tenderness of the beef, the accompanying dishes, particularly the rice, that the rice was outstanding. My diner's comments are testament to the incredible standards of both Kai and you and you's food. But this competition is about more than just one dish. Both these fantastic Chinese restaurants have had their ups and downs throughout this heat. But now it's time for me to choose between them. Winning today is very important for me uh, uh, because uh, I really want to make a proud uh, to, to my family as a, one of the uh, top Chinese chefs uh, in London. But if I beat Kai's, it'd be unbelievable. I mean, they're such a fantastic restaurant and their dish is unbelievable, you know, so we can only see, you know, um, if we beat him, it, it would be unbelievable. Only one of them can go through to the semi-finals. I've got to make a very difficult choice. My two top Chinese chefs, Alex and Victor, have finished the service of their lives at my three Michelin starred restaurant. They've both proved themselves exceptional competitors, but one team has to go. It's time to taste this incredible food cooked here today, starting with a dish created by Alex from Kai in Mayfair. The sauce, the beef, it's been marinated for 24 hours, rice wine. Beef's delicious. Sauce is very, very strong. Pumpkin's very crunchy. Bamboo shoot. Mm. Crunchy, slightly acidic, but delicious. You and you, Wagyu beef. Mm. Mm. It just melts in your mouth. It's delicious. I mean, it is really delicious. My God, it's got the texture of foie gras. It needs the greens with it. It's very rich but it's incredibly Moorish, and you feel like it's done with a, a level of authenticity. They both hold an amazing flavour. Who has the edge over this one? Both these teams have cooked their hearts out, but there can only be one winner. OK. I brought you here today for one reason and one reason only, to do something extraordinary, to do something that was out of your comfort zone and into a completely different league. Kai, the dish, you looked at it and it was like it'd come out of a 
a Gucci handbag. It was all precise and just beautifully done. The beef, phenomenal. Loved the marinade. Intelligent, smart, and it had that kind of wow. Criticizing the dish, I would have cooked the pumpkin for another two minutes. It's a little bit crunchy inside. You and you, the Wagyu, absolutely beautiful, because you, you played to your strengths. What would I change? It was simple. Today, I didn't think you'd go simple. I thought you'd go a little bit more, a little bit more daring. But this competition is not going to be won or lost on one dish alone. I'm looking for the best restaurants. Great food, great service, great atmosphere, friendly approach, and something that you want to go back to that restaurant for that phenomenal experience. <sighs> the restaurant that's going through to the semi-final, based on everything I've seen, tasted, and been part of, is... You and you. Oh. Continue those fireworks. Yeah. You deserve to be out there. Love the fireworks. Love it, love it, love it. Good job. You have an amazing restaurant. Thank you. Yeah, look after it. Of course, I'm absolutely gutted that we're not getting through. The answer wasn't the answer we would have liked to hear, but we have to move on and keep going with, with what we do every single day. Well done. Really well done. I said you had a lot of weight on your shoulders today, and you pulled it off. And it wasn't just based on that dish, it was based on the whole experience. Really well done. You should be incredibly proud. Yeah. A bloody good job. Okay. Really well done. Thank you. OK? Thank you. Thank you. Well done, well done, well done. I'm very happy. It feels amazing. Uh, I can't wait to more. tell me more. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's just good. I can't believe. We're, we're very proud of you. You don't have to say Yeah, I'm all about it. Yeah, you do, you do a good job. You're a good teacher. Yeah, you do a good job. Very good. Good job. Good job. <laughs> really sorry to say goodbye to Kai, and that chef's a bit of a mad genius. However, you and you, great restaurants, what an amazing family, and they're, they're consistent and united. British restaurants were once a laughing stock, not anymore. Today, we have some of the most exciting restaurants in the world. Together, with the best restaurant team, I've chosen the best, and tonight, my two favorite restaurants will be going head to head. They may be good, but do they have what it takes to go right to the top? For the past six months, my team and I have been all over the country checking out the best of your restaurant nominations. Now my nationwide competition continues, this time to find the best of British. British restaurants used to be all about prawn cocktails and Black Forest Gatto, but today there are restaurants all over the UK cooking the most amazing, delicious modern British food. Every British restaurant should be using the finest ingredients. We have some of the best meat, fish and vegetables on the planet, so there's no excuse not to cook with it. You nominated thousands of British restaurants, and along with my best restaurant team, I put them under extreme scrutiny and chosen my two favourites to do battle for a place in the semi-finals. From deepest Kent, it's a tiny but elegant Michelin-starred restaurant, the West House. Can you get the next two toasts, please? It's always got to be with that same passion, if you like, and drive from the first time you made it. They're going head-to-head -head with the milestone in Sheffield. Put well, the watercress on very last as it's going. It's about Yorkshire people, Yorkshire chefs producing Yorkshire food. We're about to see the Battle of Britain because the West House and the milestone must take on three extraordinary challenges. The first is every restaurant's worst nightmare, 30 hungry customers who will arrive and order all at once. First stop, the milestone in Sheffield. I'm actually standing on what used to be called Pimp's Corner in the old red light district. Now, this is an amazing location for a fantastic restaurant. 
It's run by four local lads. Front of house are the owners, Mark and Matt, who've sunk every penny into this business. One salmon, one black putty on an order. The kitchen is headed by young guns, Simon and James. Simon, how are you going? Cage fighter. <laughs> <laughs> no one fucks with you on service, do they? No, they are, no. These guys are real. They graft us, you can see that. Just from the minute you shake their hands, it's solid. It's like a plate of Sheffield steel. I love the fact that they've made their name by breaking all the rules, serving up hearty organic dishes like rolled pig's head and trotter sausages. And what's that? They're our own uh, pigs that we have. It's a farm just outside Sheffield. Right. Rear your own pigs and it yeah. goes on the menu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We encourage customers to actually go out there and get their hands dirty and start foraging for us. We'll swap it for beer, wine, or a meal. It's my mum's allotment and she's picked them all by hand, especially for you guys. In just three years, the milestone have stormed Sheffield's restaurant scene and the locals love it. There aren't a great deal of restaurants, especially in Sheffield, that are doing food of this quality. Food is amazing, it's a great environment. I'll go for the Nestle Noki. Nice, and it's made on the nettle. Gnocchi, there's a lot of nettle in there, isn't there? Yeah. The gnocchi's delicious. Really good indeed. I think what I like more than anything is the fact that it's very seasonal, very nice. I thought that food was easily of a Michelin star standard. Today you've got a chance to become the best of British. Show off. I mean, really show off. People used to doubt me because of my youth, and they did used to think I were a cocky little shit, but I'm passionate, I'm dedicated, and I've got the drive to take it further. Good, because my diners are expecting something incredible, and they all need to be served two courses in just two hours. This is a young, dynamic restaurant that's going places. Give that experience to my 30 diners today, and they'll be leaving on cloud nine. Any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I suppose it's just, uh, it's just a little bit quirky. The starters include black pudding with Bloody Mary, cucumber and gin soup with cured salmon, and the pea panna cotta. The pea panna cotta represents the first sort of pea cotta spring. That's a really nice summary option, and the idea is that you're walking down a garden path. Rather than choose the more adventurous options, most diners are sticking to the traditional fare. Let me get the uh, homemade black pudding, please. Black pudding, please, please. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. It looks like we're going to have a lot of black pudding on order. Yeah. It's good that there's such a popular choice on the menu, but the punters might not want it once they've been served this. First of all, from the kitchen today, we have an amuse bouche for you. So it's a little appetizer, homemade chicken and black pudding to eat. There seems to be a lot of black pudding coming out of the kitchen. Popular today, yeah. yeah. But they're already starting off with black pudding as well. Did not anyone tell them that beforehand or not? No. No. If they're giving away uh, black pudding as a canapé, yeah. they should have said it before they took the orders. There's so much black pudding going out. Yeah. So you go, first two courses, black pudding, black pudding. I don't want to eat black pudding twice. With Sheffield people, they like really heavy dishes as well. They like, they like that meaty flavour. No, that's not a small slice of black pudding, is it? It's a man-sized one. I wasn't too keen on the black pudding. I thought it was really nice, but it was just too much for me, to be honest. It's on to the mains. Simon's ambitious food includes turbot poached and red wine, nettle gnocchi and pan-fried rabbit loin with pigtail cannelloni. Do you want these rabbit going on stage all at once? In all fairness, Jay, all in, yeah? Yeah. Simon has made the unusual decision to operate this service like a banquet. Instead of staggering the dishes, he's preparing all the main courses at the same time. So we're just going to go everything away. The problem now is that Simon has all the rabbit dishes ready, but the other main courses are lagging behind, and food can't leave the pass until the order for the whole table is cooked. As it sits in the window and dries out, I'm just getting nervous. I don't want the food coming back saying it's dry. You've got one hour, ten minutes left, so if you can just do one table at a time, you'll see a difference in quality. It's not... The fastest restaurant in Britain, I'm looking for the best restaurant. Not good enough. Two hours, 30 diners, two courses only. So stagger them like a normal service. It's a shame, it's just sat there, disintegrating under those lights when it should be in front of the customer and they're getting that magic there and then. Is it possible to add <coughs> a little bit hotter? In fact, of, a lot hotter. Of course, yeah, that's not good. These are my worst fears come true. When food sits too long in the past, it gets cold, it gets dry, it gets sent back. So that's exactly what I was trying to say. Do you know what I mean? It's not a, a, a banquet, and everyone's got it in their mind that we're going to treat this today like a banquet. It's such a fucking shame. The rabbit loin, the plate's not hot. The cold plate. Can I have another rabbit loin, no? Now Simon's in trouble. There is no rabbit loin left. So, thinking fast, he substitutes it with rabbit leg. But he's starting from scratch, and the leg takes longer to cook than the loin. So we're short of one portion of the rabbit. But it's coming up now. Do you guys want to explain that to the customer? I, I just, yeah, the rabbit's still raw there, that's what I'm trying to say. That's 
So she's moving into your rabbit. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Your rabbit line. This one looks like they've just thrown it together. Yeah. This don't even look like rabbit. No, man, this is not cooked well enough for me. I don't eat my meat like this. You want it done a little bit more for you? I want it more than done a little bit more. This is uncooked. Having tried and failed twice, Matt, the owner, wants to make amends. Can I get you anything? No. Well, only because these guys are eating, obviously, your experience has been, as I've been up to scratch. A bit of fish? <laughs> no you problem. You OK? No problem. I'm fine, thank no you. No problem. I'll show you when you get your dessert. OK, cheers. Sorry, guys, enjoy. It's let down what was otherwise a great service. It's absolutely delicious. Really, really good. It's a really interesting combination of textures. I'd rate the service probably 9 out of 10. Food is immense. Absolutely immense. No complaints whatsoever. One little tiny bit of service just got us. Starters, fine. Boosh, fine. Mains, all going fine until that one point, one table. Yeah. Fair. Most of the diners leave happy, but I've got concerns. Thank you. Uh, right, how do you feel? Not wholly happy. Lots of mistakes made. Um, I think we've just got to learn from them. Yeah. Whose decision was it to serve my diners as a banquet? They were mine. When all the checks came on, I made a decision because all of them were having starters. Yeah. So I was just going to try and sweep the room. Yep. Serve one course, second course, third course. That was a big mistake for me today. For every 30 seconds that food is sat there, it's going down and down and down and down in standard. But you've got a dream set up because your customers are sat two metres away from your stove. And it was such a shame, because then food came back because it wasn't hot enough. The good news is, the customers love the food, and that's what I'm trying to say. You're on the verge of just really popping out there. You rear your own pigs, and you make your fresh bread twice a day. So you bust your balls to create that food. And when it sits there, and they're not benefiting, God, I could scream. You're doing yourselves an injustice. And that responsibility is on your shoulder, Simon, because you're the head chef. I know. And I know you can do a lot better and what you did today. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. We're Lessons. always looking to improve. Lessons learned. Yeah. We're young, we're ambitious, we want to be the best. We can look at what mistakes we did and not allow them to happen again. Next, I go toe to toe with my second outstanding restaurant, the West House from Kent. There are tables there watching starters and main courses being served, and yet they haven't had the order taken. You wouldn't normally have 30 in the restaurant at once, would you? So, control freak. Oh, fuck that. It's the British heat of my nationwide restaurant competition, and a squad of hungry diners are about to descend on my second competitor. From thousands of your nominations, I've chosen the West House from Biddington in Kent. How are you? Hello. How are you no, doing? Good to see you too. Right, where is he? Beaver away in the kitchen. Hi, you. <laughs> Good to see you. And you? I met Graham 15 years ago when he worked next door to my first London restaurant. Even then, he showed real flair. The idea is to um, build dishes around the central ingredient and, you know, not fanny around with it too much, not chuck too many other things on the plate, and try and enhance, you know, bring out the flavours. Graham hasn't always been a chef. He started out as a drummer for 80s hair rockers, Ya Ya. No, I've never heard of them either. Still has some of the hair, but happily not the shorts. Luckily, I've done that for a long time. Various tours and albums and all sorts. And got to see the world and eat in a lot of restaurants as well, which is quite good. Mm -hmm. 17 years ago, Graham gave up rock and roll to follow his dream of becoming a chef, working in a string of top London restaurants. Then, eight years ago, he took a huge risk. He moved his family to the Kent countryside and opened up the West House. 18 months after opening, he won his first mission star. That's not bad for a drummer. And when you won the Mission Star, were well, you on your own in the yeah. kitchen? Wow, so it is a one-man band back to yeah. playing the drums again. Everything about this family restaurant is understated old English charm. Graham's partner, Jackie, works front of house with their children, Jake and Jess. Who's in charge? It'll be me. Yeah. <laughs> Happy being in charge? Uh, yeah. yeah. That means I a polite be, no. Yeah. <laughs> beginning I didn't know what I was doing and uh, now eight years on it, it's not as bad as it was but I didn't like it at first no. I'll start off with the ham and eggs it's very um, it's very clean really nice flavours popular on the menu yeah yeah very I can imagine why what I like most about West House is the fact that 
Graham is a, is a true chef. He cooks from the heart, not into frills. He's into flavour, and it shows. This quaint English restaurant is about to be severely tested because my diners will soon be arriving and ordering all at the same time. My worst fear is you're going to tear up, basically. <laughs> I'm just expecting the whole family to put in an amazing performance today to pull this one off. Just like the Milestone, they have just two hours to serve everyone. This little 11 table restaurant is going to be packed. You have a mission star, so myself and my diners are expecting an experience there. It's a three and a two twos now. As soon as you can, get the first table, yeah? Are you both ready to order? One had it, one lamb and one Three. That looks like air traffic control up there. What is that, huh? <laughs> I'm getting there. I've never seen tickets written like that before. Do they have bread on ten? Do they have bread on ten? Fucking, what is that there? That's one, one ham hock and one mackerel? Yeah. Jesus Christ. The tickets are confusing, but the food coming out of the kitchen is simply perfect. Starters include warm smoked haddock carpaccio with bacon dressing and pea shoots, and that delicious ham hock with scotch egg and black pudding. How's the um, ham hock in Piccadilly? It's Absolutely really fantastic. Good. Enjoying it? Really, really delicious. Fine. These are amazing. And you have the little scotch eggs with black pudding? Yeah. yeah. So, first main course is coming up now, Jake. Griddle's going to be busy today, isn't it? It's going to be a bit, isn't it? So, you're grilling knocky as well. It's the first one for me. I've never seen that before. Just to colour it off, then it gets tossed through with the artichokes. For mains, there's a choice of roast chicken with herb gnocchi. Brill with samphire or lamb with sweetbreads. Three of you in here, no one out there, I'm nervous. Yeah. Are they orders taken? Yeah. Just left there. Yeah. Why would you just dump an order there like that? I'm finding the ordering system impossible to fathom. And Jackie's handwriting is more like a doctor's than a maitre d'. No one can read it. No, it's one hat. One hat, it, yeah. I rewrote the ticket out and the, um, Ben picked that up as well and he'd already sent it, it was my fault. I left it on there because it was a bit he couldn't understand my writing, so it's my fault. Yeah. Uh, today was the fucking day to do it if ever, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, yeah. table ten, two chicken. What? Uh, who's table who's one and five and lamb? Two lamb. Look, the two in the middle and the other. Jackie's supposed to be in control of front of house, but it doesn't feel like it. Something's not right. The service isn't as I'd imagine for a Michelin-starred restaurant. We've been here about 40 minutes, and um, aside from the drinks order, we haven't had seen the staff coming to get take any orders for food. There's five tables in there. Mm -hmm. They still haven't had their order taken. Right. He just he shout what orders to get. He's telling you when to take the orders. At the moment, yeah. Get three. I'll get two free. Just get table nine and table three, yeah. You tell them when to take the orders, right? That's right. There's people that. Have already eaten one course, I think, at least, so I was hoping that we might get asked what we would like to order soon. There are tables there watching starters and main courses being served, and yet they haven't had the order taken. Yeah, you wouldn't normally have 30 in the restaurant at once, would you, so... But they haven't had the order taken, let alone just seems a little bit... No. Arse over tit up there. The dining room's controlled by the kitchen, so they're rudderless. They can't do anything unless the kitchen says so, which is just crazy. They need to function. Control freak. It's not control freak. It's trying to stay focused. And I'm sorry, shit. it is because you're not in the dining room, so they're all, all right, sat there staring okay. at your team well, in the dining room. Okay. So control freak. All right. I've never seen anything so stupid in all my life. Chefs don't tell waiters when to take an order. That's the responsibility of the dining room to give it to the chef. He's trying to control fucking everything. Does Ben know how to do main courses as well? N uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Eight months in this kitchen working alongside you and he can't do a main course yet. I think it's you don't want to tell them it, you know that? No, it's time, you know, there's a lot to do over there. Sorry about the delay for the starters just over an hour. How are they? Lovely. It's really very nice. Yeah. yeah. You've waited far too long. Um, drinks? We ordered some drinks before they took our order and we haven't had them. Right. right. Drinks and um, even before we started taking their order, nothing's hit the table yet. <laughs> Drinks on three. Now was it They're not lying, but let's put it that no, way. No, but if they no, just no. say they've ordered drinks and nothing's yeah, happened. Sorry. Fucking hell. To give control back to the front of house, I can see a solution. If you'd like it different, I can go yeah. and get that cooked further for can you. Can you place everything on it because everything's cold now? Okay, right, yeah. Graham's son, Jake, is on top of things. Yeah, it'll just be a few minutes, just re redoing it for you. Okay? Yeah, I will do. Wouldn't you be best running a dining room? You seem to yeah. be the only one that actually knows 
how to do it properly and put that on. That's not been disparaging to Mum, but you yeah. seem to know what you're doing. It was sort of I wanted to do it mine and his yeah. way, and she's got her little no. ways that she does. But you seem to be. She won't break yeah. out of them. You seem to know. Yeah. And this service would be a lot smoother if it had somebody right. running it. It's tough. It's tough. Couldn't you tell? The food was absolutely delicious. I think the only thing that wasn't really up to standard was the uh, the service. It was worth the wait, though. That's that's the good thing. Oh, fuck that. My diners have no complaints about the food because the cooking is inspiring. But Graham is tripping up the service and he has to understand this. <sighs> OK. Here's the issue. Unfortunately, OK, the service is nowhere near to the standard of food. You left two tables, you know, sat there for over an hour before we even took their order. Mm. And the dining room felt short-staffed. Food sent to the same table twice, the stars already gone. Uh, Jackie, across the two hours, you didn't give me the impression that you were enjoying it as much as you should have. Mm. Are you 100% happy running that dining room? On a normal day, yeah. On a normal day. Yeah. But today, I was a bit, you know, Panicking. Fine. Well, yeah. Jake, you were the one shining light out there, and why you're not at the helm, relieving the pressure from your mother and working closely with your father, I'll never know. You've sort of castrated the dying room yeah. because you're controlling them. Yeah. You've got to cut some of the control freak in you and allow them to do their job, and you'll be surprised at the results. I'm telling you it because I want this place to really succeed in this competition. Why? Because the food is beautiful. Well done. It's like any any criticism, you you take it on board, don't you? Filter it through and uh, and react. So yeah, I mean, there's some there's some food for full. I'm looking for the best restaurant, not the best chef. And service is crucial today. Customers are prepared to wait, but they're not prepared to wait for an hour to get their order taken. No chance. By pushing both restaurants to extremes, I've uncovered the areas they need to improve on. Now, I've invited them both to London for a progress report. But the restaurants haven't got a clue that they face one more test. Without telling them, I sent in my secret diners because I really want to find out exactly what happens when the teams don't know they're under scrutiny. I've sent in top food critic Simon Davis with instructions to be as difficult as possible, something that comes quite naturally to him. The teams don't know that I've been spying on them. First to face the music is the milestone. I wanted to make sure that you weren't just rolling out the red carpet for me. I had a secret diner in there, and this is what he saw. Hello. We'll grab some lunch. Do we yeah, just of course, grab a seat? You just grab a seat, do you? Yeah, okay, great. I love that. I love the fact you do dripping. Ready to start, actually. Yeah. Such a good idea. The dripping, you'd have your, your roast, and then the dripping you'd have throughout the week spread on the bread. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Cheap, cheerful, slightly nostalgic. Really nice, and look how happy, you know, customers sound. Really good. All right, this is ox tongue corned beef. No, they're near seasoned enough. Very bland. That's quite disappointing, actually. It's such a shame, because the, the, the diner shot up. Wow, dripping, it's it. Uh, and then bang, oh, shit. When you've got the balls to put corned beef and ox tongue on a plate, that simply, it has to be seasoned perfectly. We've actually changed that already, because we read the comment card that night. Just a lack of seasoning, do you? It was essentially a lack of seasoning, yeah. yeah. You know, thanks a lot. <laughs> Oh, really? Oh, well, I wasn't expecting that. I know, I'm perfectly, I'm perfectly happy to pay for it. I'd like to pay for it. No, I'd like to pay for it. Really? Really? They won't let us pay. No charge, nice gesture. Gives him no reason to complain about it. I love the way he was so patient and so polite, really polite. On several occasions, we've seen some really succinct um, very focused ability in the kitchen with very well sourced food. And then you get things like these this bowl of chips. You know. 
pubs, not even places that claim to call themselves gastro pubs that serve better chips than that. It's useless. Hmm. Burnt chips. It's a simple, stupid mistake that shouldn't really happen, mm. ever. Can I have a word with the chef? Is the chef, is the chef around? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Well, no, I want to talk to him about something. I want to talk to him about that. Look at that. Would you eat that? Would you eat that? No. So why should I eat it? Well, no, I want to talk to the chef. Don't be too much. About the dessert menu, yeah, I'd love to. All oh, right, hi there, brilliant. Well, they're gone now, but I wanted to talk to you. I know they haven't noticed them. What is it? Like two or three trainees upstairs that I'm trying to teach. Right. How to cook. And sometimes we have slight issues with tables, especially when I'm like most of the tables out. So we do understand that there is slight issues with dishes. But I need to train chefs, especially the chef, to bring them up. Right. What we do is a standard. But I just wondered why you allowed that chip to go out when it was burnt. Because I wasn't in there at the time. I was in the cookbook school. So really? Back in, back Sounds like you're trying to do quite a lot up there. I do have a lot to do. Do you know what I mean? So I understand those issues. Well, look, you better get back up there, but thanks for coming down. All right, bye. I thought you were going to blow a gasket, to be honest. I could cry. I could cry. A chip goes out like it's on the back of an arse end of a, a, a takeaway van. There's flashes of brilliance in there, and it works in such a magical way, and yet you bust your balls. Fresh bread, rearing pigs, cooking school, you know, slow down and focus on what you've got. The chips were burnt, they shouldn't have been burnt, they should have been absolutely fine, they should have been fantastic, the guy should have been picking them out of the bowl, saying, my God, these are fucking amazing chips. I've seen a lot of problems that we do need to solve, but we've also seen a lot of strengths that we know we have got. So as long as we bring everything together, tighten it up, I think we can improve and we can make things better than they ever have been. Next. They're not busy. How could you confuse the two tables? My secret diner snoops at the West House. Here, it's about that level of perfection on every plate. And both teams come head to head for the final battle. Shh. How do you forget oh. that lettuce? I'm fucked up. Come on, one more table. Yeah. Let's go. The milestone from Sheffield are battling it out with the West House from Kent to become my best British restaurant. Uh. Graham and his family team from the West House are about to discover that I've been spying on them. I sent in undercover diner Sarah Durden Robertson. She's a cookery writer and a food consultant. When I sent my 30 diners into the West House, Mum Jackie confused everyone with her ordering system. Have things improved since? Unknown to all four of you, you've actually been under two tests. Because after I left, I sent in a secret diner. Oh. And here's what they saw. Do you make the bread here? Yeah, all the bread's made every morning. It comes down about 8 o'clock usually. Who, the chef? Yeah, he's on the dad's side. Oh, yeah. God. He makes no. bread. It smells delicious. Yeah, no, it is. I do like the bread, especially the brown one. I really like the brown fruit in that one. He seems quite proud of his father and what they do because he talks about them with great affection. I kind of feel like I'm sitting in the family kitchen. It's made it all a lot more personal, actually. Really good. Lovely start. Oh. No. Now, what is this again? What did I do? Foie gratarine. Foie gratarine. I think I ordered a mackerel carpaccio. Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, I see. Sorry. Um, oh, that's nice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's OK. I thought I'd gone mad for a second. It's OK. Oh. They're not busy. How could you confuse the two tables? should remember what's going on. Damn. Mm. Watching your food being put down on a table in front of you is like eating second-hand food. Whenever that happens again, the food goes back into the yeah, kitchen. I forgot that. How did you feel watching that? A bit gutted <laughs> that I messed it up, so... I could go and write those tickets for you now and show you the correct procedure and what ways could be so much easier for you. Well, do me a favour, do that, cos I've been trying to do that for about eight years, but I get ignored. Maybe you listen to you, yeah? So I ordered the... Um, the interesting thing is, they didn't ask me how I wanted the lamb done, so I'm afraid when it arrives I may discover I've got a problem with it. Ah, oh, thank you. 
I'm sorry to be pimp. I didn't realise that the lamb came so pink. Would it be possible to have one better done? Uh, yeah, I'll just go and see. Thank you. Surely you must ask a customer, medium, pink, well done? No, that's their prerogative. It's not this old 1980s chef mentality, what I say goes. And it saves the frustration, doesn't it? It saves that dish being done twice. Oh, thank you. And the chicken, I'll just be right back. Oh, my goodness. So they've brought two completely new main courses. Rather than bringing back the half cold first plate, they've brought back an entirely new main course. That is very impressive. Great recovery. Wonderful recovery. The fact that you took time and done two new main courses, you know, pain in the ass of the kitchen, but you did it uh, without any hassle and left a really nice impression. Despite the fact that they actually ended up cooking four main courses, they've only charged for one each. So it's £48 a head. Food is just faultless. That is outstanding value for money. It really is. Clearly, experience, phenomenal. Food, delicious. Value for money, spot on. I want to come back here, because it felt like they were coming to your house. If you get up to speed with the modern day system of taking tickets, it doesn't need to be that pressurised putting those dishes down. So we have to look at the disorganisation. That's it. You know, I came straight back in the kitchen and told Graham what I'd done. And, I remember, I remember that. And I was so moment. gutted that I'd done it, you know, because as I said, in eight years, I've never made that mistake before. It would be fantastic to sit there, see that secret footage, and there'd be absolutely not a single thing wrong. Sit there and pat each other on the back and all leave. But life's not really like that, is it? Graham's putting a brave face on things, but he must realise he's got a lot of work to do if he's going to win this competition. I put both teams through the ringer to test their skills as chefs and restaurateurs. Now it's their last chance to prove themselves. To earn a place in the semi-finals, they've got to cook one exceptional dish. Something worthy of a place on my three michelin star menu. I'd be a liar if I said I slept well last night, because you're just running everything through over and over and over in your head. It's just all the pre-match nerves, isn't it? It's all pre-match tension. Quite daunting, never been in a place quite like this. It's a mixture of excitement and nerves. I want to win more than anything. Got to get everything absolutely right, so it all rides on this, really. Good luck. To earn the honour of representing British cuisine in the semi-finals, their dish must be nothing less than exceptional. This is the Battle of Britain, and for me, two of the best restaurants are going head to head for the very first time. There's no undercover footage, there's no coach, it's just you on a plate. It's 20 stunning dishes, and that is it. Make sure as you go through to the semi-final. Good luck. I've asked them to create their dishes using a classic British ingredient, venison. These are two amazing restaurants coming head to head, and for me, the best of British always excites me more than any other category. I'm expecting great flavours, great balance, and phenomenal fireworks. I've invited 20 esteemed guests to judge both teams' creations. The diners include Elizabeth Carter, editor of The Good Food Guide, and award-winning British farmer, Wilfred Emmanuel Jones. And the front of house teams from both restaurants are here too. So in terms of nervous on scale to 10, what are you? 11. 11. Yeah. Yeah. This is our last chance to prove ourselves. I'm on a four covers table two. West House, four venison loin. Chef. Graham's divides the dish worthy of his Michelin starred status. He's using venison loin. So with onion marmalade potatoes, pickled cherries, and finished with crispy bacon and venison liver. It's hard to get because it's the hunter's breakfast, they call it. They tend to nick this part. It's got a great flavor, you know, but you need to keep it nice and pink, nice and rare. It's a technical dish with the potential for disaster, especially if Graham's control freakery prevents sous chef Ben from supporting him. I know what you like. You won't let anyone do anything. What are you actually doing today, apart from making Graham tea? Are you actually participating in the cooking? Yeah, definitely. I'm doing all Good. the garnish, looking after the garnish. Christian bacon, potatoes, yeah. onion marmalade, cherries, yeah. and our whole plate as well, uh -huh. if you let me. I know you love taking your time when you put these dishes together. It's actually one hour for 20, not one hour per dish. Yeah. Just in case. Because yeah. I know what you like when you get buried away. There's no pulling you back out there, is there? 
My fear, Sir Graham, is that the food is so complex, there's four or five elements, so he just needs to offload and open up and bring Ben with him to get that dish absolutely perfect. So, four more venison loin away now, Graham, please. West House on table two, please. Ben, send one table, clear your shit down. Send the next table, clear your shit down, yeah? What I'll do, Ben, I'm going to leave these for you to play up by the last wallet of the liver, so I'm going to have to do it, yeah? Graham's delegating at last, but with time on his hands, he started cooking the delicate venison liver too early. That liver is your, is your danger zone, you know that, Graham? I do. Danger zone. How do you want to serve it? I want to serve it rare. Rare. So you cook it rare here, it goes out there pink. When it sits there, it's firm as fuck. Do you understand? So when he's two thirds of the plate dressed and you're happy, have the compass just to fry that at the last moment. Tell me when I'm going to the liver, yeah? Yep. You ready? Uh, yeah, go for it. Two livers in, yeah? Yeah. Then try and stand those cherry stems up, please. They look fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. No two ways about it. Go, please, table two. Two more venison on the way now, please, Graham. With Chef. Table four, please, thank you. I'm working well as a team at the moment. I mean, it's great, because Ben's getting involved with stuff on the pass, allowing me to cook the liver of things last minute. Graham's happy with his food, but will the diners agree? Enjoy. It smells absolutely yeah, superb. Yeah, it smells really lovely. The flavours are all there. I mean, exactly what we always get in the restaurant. I'm very proud of him, yeah. It's a good dish. It looks good as well. Mm. Boys are going to nail it. <laughs> Graham's dish has set the bar seriously high. To be in with a chance of winning, the milestone lads really have a battle on their hands. So, on order, four covers, table six, milestone, four, venison, Wellington. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. Big competition day, going head to head against the Mission Star restaurant. Yeah. You've got no cooking school today, no downstairs, no upstairs, no. one kitchen, 20 diners. No excuses. What's the chances? I'm optimistic. I am, yeah. I think we're going to do it. Obviously, they've got a Michelin star, we haven't, so we're sort of the underdogs. But if we can do this, then it'd be amazing. Head chef Simon is pulling out all the stops with a ballsy dish of roast venison loin and a haunch of venison and nettle wellington. Served with beetroot fondant, watercress puree and braised lettuce. Well, this could be the dish of my career. If all goes well, then uh, it could change things for us drastically. How far are you off, Simon? Six minutes? Seven. Six, yeah. Six, seven, seven minutes, six, yeah. yeah. Simon's dish requires perfect timing, something he messed up when he fed my coach diners. Boy, I'd rather keep the customers waiting there for five minutes. Yeah, than serve a beetroot, that's not cooked properly, yeah? There's no room for mistakes. All six elements of this dish must be cooked to perfection. I four venison up to the pass now. Guys, make every plate count, yeah? Good. Happy? Service? Yep. Go, please. But in his haste to get the food out, Simon has made a terrible schoolboy error. How can you forget oh. that lettuce? I'm fucked up. Do you know what I mean? Come on, you should know that by now. Get me Rob, please, urgently. Let's go. Uh, that's the braised lettuce that we forgot off the main course. It's fine. It's not on there now. They haven't finished it. They're not even halfway through. Go, please, yeah? Yeah, yeah just apologise quickly, thank you. Fucking hell, Simon. So, following just behind me is a braised baby gem lettuce. A more experienced chef would recover from a mistake like this quickly, but Simon's rattled. I missed it off the plate, and so I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off at myself. Look at me, look at me. And then it's gone. Yeah. Yep. You can pull it back. So, Come on, one more table. Yeah. Let's go. Chef. Thank you. Yes, chef. 30 seconds. Venison will be up first. Right. Coming up on this, yeah? Yeah. Hot. Watch up. Lights up. The sauce up. Now, this time, the lettuce is on the plate, yeah, not separate. Table one, please, yeah? See this? Start working up another four, yeah? Yeah. Simon's bounced back, and he's talking to James, and more importantly, they're together as a team. So it's a dynamic duo, as opposed to one up, one down. Happy with that? Yeah. So this, very nice. The dishes look fantastic. Absolutely delicious. James, yeah? Simon, keep it going, yeah? Yeah. That's your last table, yes? Yeah. Make that last table look exactly and taste exactly the same as the first, please, yeah? Gently. OK, good. Off we go. Some roasted loin of venison with nettle wellington. Enjoy. Thank you. It looks absolutely brilliant. It smells divine, I must admit. This is just spectacular. Incredibly succulent. Mm. Some good clean flavours. Mm. Mm. Beetroot's really good, yeah. Well done, guys, yeah? Yeah, big deep breath. Well done, chef. Nice one. <laughs> Service is over. 
My discerning guests have tasted both restaurants' food. I want to find out what they thought, starting with a milestone. Let's talk the venison with the Wellington. Wonderful combination of flavours, the texture, the taste. Mm -hmm. It really worked for me. Wilfred, how was it? The person who did the Wellington, I would hear so eager to win. Yeah, he looks like a cage fighter. He's like he's ready for action in a big way. Yeah, in a big way. And you could see that in the dish. There was too much going on. And then the one with Charlie was a bit more laid back. Yes. And this is the West House. That was my preference. And, I, yes. and it's because he wasn't trying too hard. I preferred the West House. I thought the way they cooked the venison was perfect. And I absolutely love the liver, which is something I normally don't eat and was a real treat. I preferred the Wellington, actually. The Wellington. Yeah, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I thought the pastry was brilliant. It was really light. Extremely difficult to choose. Yes. Uh, a, bit, a bit like two beautiful ladies who can choose. <laughs> wow. Both brigades have performed well, but they've also come up against pressure. Gordon doesn't miss anything, does he? He's just eyes on everything. I think overall it went really, really well, yeah. The food looks amazing. We tasted every dish that went out, so hopefully. That'll be the winning dish. I'm hoping for the best, but it's all in the eyes of Gordon at the end of the day. Both of these restaurants have great strengths, but they've also both got flaws. I'd love to put them both through to the semi-finals, but I can't. Which of them has the potential to be truly great? I've got to decide. My top two British restaurants, the Michelin-starred West House from Kent, and the milestone from Sheffield have absolutely cooked their hearts out. I'm about to tell one of them their competition journey ends here. There have been errors, yet both still produce truly outstanding food. To help me make my choice, I need to compare both dishes. Both dishes visually stunning. I can transport these two plates and put them in any top restaurant and they wouldn't look out of place. That's how excited I am about the best of British. Milestone, braised lettuce, beetroot, a Wellington, done with a cheap cut. Mm. Phenomenal. And the nettle pancake, mind-blowing. Mm. It's delicious, buttery, slightly gamey loin of venison that just, just melts in your mouth. It's just like put a knife through butter. It's that soft, wonderful. West House, got that wow factor. Mm. Delicious. God, it's so hard. Liver, very difficult to get right. It's got that little touch of gamey bitterness to it that really goes well with the rich cut from the loin. Seasoned beautifully. The cherries make it work because of the acidity. And it's got that side of, ooh that Moorish, sumptuous richness. I am really taken back by these dishes. The standard is incredible. I love this one. Love it, love it, love it. But then there's magic in this one. For me right now, they're both winners. Two remarkable British restaurants, but only one can win a place in the semi-finals. OK, um, I invited both of you here today to blow me away. For one restaurant to excel, um, I didn't get that. No, because I got both restaurants excelling in a big way. And it's amazing to see that kind of performance in what, in my mind, is one of the most exciting categories. But the joy of watching and tasting what you've just done in there has now become a nightmare on a personal front because I have to eliminate one of you and put one of you through to the semi-final. So I thought, well, which dish would I put on my lunch menu tomorrow morning? I came up with the decision. Both of the dishes would sit there. That's what I'm faced with right now. So the winner is not based on one dish. Because if it was, both of you would be going through. Think of the journey. I turn up with a coach, 30 diners come swooping in, causes havoc. And it's the biggest pain in the ass that any restaurant could ever wish for. I then film you undercover 
I send in an awkward secret diner to turn the place upside down to see how you handle that kind of pressure. Here's my question. Which restaurant would I prefer to return to? West House, would I go to that intimate, stunning, family-run Michelin star done with charm? Or would it be the Sheffield, I suppose, balls of steel? Because it is run with a heartbeat that is missing in a lot of restaurants. Tough, very tough. It is so hard, you've got no idea. The restaurant going through to the semi-final based on everything I've seen is Milestone, congratulations. Yeah. That was, for me, one of the toughest, most difficult decisions I've ever made. But that dish was unique, and don't stop cooking like that. Cool. Yeah? Going out of this stage, as far as I'm concerned, makes us, you know, at worst, the second best uh, British restaurant in the competition. So, you know, we, we carry on. We do, we do what we do at the restaurant and, you know, keep the customers happy, and that's, that's the main thing. Show me some love, brother. <laughs> uh, guys, well done. Really well done. Yeah, phenomenal. You pulled out the subs there today, and it worked, yeah? Good job. Well done, well done, well done. Cheers. It's just amazing. It's fantastic. It's a dream come true. It's proved a point to us four and to a lot of other people that are expecting a lot from us. And thank God we've actually come through and we've, we've, we've made it. With that kind of determination, that's where the future of British cooking is, up there in Sheffield. But right now, this competition is only going to get tougher, and I hope they don't let me down. <laughs>